What is up? Welcome back. Welcome back to Mandela Effect Tonight. Hosted by Sean Indigo, and here I am to continue our um, our our game of spin the wheel. See what category we're going to talk about, and and let's get in it. Let's get into it. All right, here we go. All right. Again, the eagle symbol, I'm not trying to uh, imply anything. It just happens to be hanging on my wall, and I happen to like the eagles, or football team. All right, let's see. You can't really see it too all too well, but in the future, I'll, uh, I'm, uh, I'll make modifications. You know, this, we're still early in the game, right? Okay, so we're going to spin, and we got complimentary memories again. All right. Now, when I say again, that was uh, what I had. Last uh, on this on the last uh, video, this will be part three of, of episode one. Okay, this is part three. Complimentary memories. If you haven't watched the previous videos, I suggest you do because, um, to be honest with you, you re I take that back. You really don't need to because each video is self-contained. Of course, all the, all the information is uh, presented in a, in a series, but it's you can go out of order. It actually doesn't matter. But anyway, complimentary memories. Things that um, a Mandela effect shift change for me and a memory that's separate from the change. Let me rephrase that. It's a memory that I possess that verifies the change. A crystal clear, concrete memory that makes it much more credible that it's not just I think it was like that. No, I know it was like that. Complimentary memory. Something that makes you know. All right. Complimentary memory. Bear with me for a second here. Okay. All right. This one's going to be pretty straightforward, pretty quick. Berenstein Bears. One of the most famous of all the changes. Okay. How do I know that it was an E and not an A? Besides the fact that Baron Steam Bears with the E is like burned into my brain because I've seen it so many times, how do I know? Besides trusting my memory, how do I know it was an E and not an A? Well, I have a complimentary memory. I clearly remember thinking to myself one day, hmm, I wonder why it's not pronounced Stein, the Baron Stein Bears. I wonder if people do pronounce it Stein. Because I always hear it as Steen, but it could be Stein. Well, it's either Steen or Stein. All right. So if it was spelled Baron Stein, in the reality, the timeline, whatever you want to call it, that I was that I existed in back then, <clears throat> if it was Stein, why in God's name would I freaking have that memory? Stein versus Steen. E I I E. E I I E Steen Stein. There was no stain. There was no A. And I, I'm beating a dead horse with that one. You all know there was no stain. But I have that specific memory just to help back up for me. It was not stain. Okay. Spin it again. <clears throat> all right. We got maps. It was on the line really close, but it's not, it was on the maps. All right, let's do it. Okay, now these, uh, and I've talked about the maps a lot. Um, that was that was um, a, a big thing for me because, yeah, the, when the names were changing, um, that was pretty interesting. But then the maps changing, that took it to, uh, to a whole new level of mindfuckness and excitement. All right, so let's talk about Alaska. Okay. Now the now oh my point was that I, I I've talked about maps a lot, so I try I'm trying to cover now things that I haven't really touched on too much or at all. So Alaska, um, I <laughs> you know what's funny, um, I remember um, thinking about how close Alaska was to Siberia, but but and then and then but I didn't notice the coastline being completely jacked up, Logan. Now now it could be that it's. That it, this is a more recent change, and that it's you know it's it's a fluid situation, um, or there was just so much to take in that I just overlooked that at the time. Either way, Alaska is not not close to what I remember it looking like with regards to its coastline. All right, the freaking huge peninsula 
sticking off the west coast of Alaska. Um, we're, we're at Norton Sound and Kotzebue Sound. Forgive my pronunciation if you're from Alaska. Uh, maybe I butchered it. I don't know. But, yeah, well, look at that. Look at that. No way. Not for me. No way. Um, the funny thing is, those who say Alaska looks funny, talk about, point out the same exact or almost exact part. Freaking coastline looking jacked. Particularly that huge peninsula. Okay. And then also, uh, Alaska has this, like, chain of islands that stretches to Japan um, by Bristol Bay and the Bering Sea and those islands. You can, like, travel via island pretty much. Bounce from island to island all the way to Japan. So, yeah. I don't remember that. All right. So, that was, uh, that was maps. All right. Let's spin it again see what we get. All right, we go. Here we go. <laughs> complimentary memories. Hmm. All right. Again, complimentary memories. So, here we go. Okay. So, the Giza pyramids, the Great Pyramid, the Great Pyramids, the Three Pyramids in Giza, the Three Pyramids in Egypt, the Great Pyramid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Okay. Now, I um, have a clear memory of the day I got to look at the pyramids up close, not in person, never been there, nope, 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 on a, a software, a computer software, Google Earth specifically, where I was able to zoom in and, 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 and study the landscape and look, look at it closer. Now... That was that's a very real and, and vivid memory for me because of how excited I was because I've always been fascinated by the pyramids because I've always been fascinated by what, what what the earth was like before the great flood and the pyramids seem to have a strong connection either they were built before the great flood or those who lived before the great flood possessed the the know-how to to sophistication to build these things after the fact I, I'm Pretty sure they were built before the flood, but well, that's for another day. Point is, uh, it was really awesome to like see it up close, and um, yeah. And okay, so that that was years ago, and then more recently, 2015, Mandela effect changes, map changes, everything's looking crazy. So I looked at the pyramids, and what did I see? Well, all of a sudden, the city is, like, right up practically touching the pyramids. Like, the, the Great Pyramid and the city are almost touching. And I remember the pyramids, at least in the Google Earth stuff, and, and overhead shots and books and stuff, but they were more isolated. They were by the city, but there was, like, a couple football fields, a couple at least several hundred yards, maybe, maybe like, half a mile even. Like, like it was distance. There was distance. Also, I remember the pyramids being more, more preserved, more intact. These pyramids look pretty rough, pretty worn down, pretty crumbly. A lot more crumbly than I ever, ever recall. I remember them being much, much more uh, um, pristine looking, secure, not, not damaged, crumbled. Um, the, the, there, there's the two twins now. You get There's like giant pyramid, giant pyramid, and teeny pyramid. No, I remember giant pyramid. A little brother, a little bit smaller pyramid, but still really big, and then a medium. So it went big, almost big, but and then and then medium. No, it's giant or big, big, tiny. So uh, no, uh, -uh. Um, and then the capstone missing from the Great Pyramid. <sighs> Never came across that in all the years I was studying the pyramids. Not not that I studied and and. I'm, I try not to exaggerate, um, so that's why I'm backtracking on that. I studied, uh, I studied about the pyramids a lot. I've always, like I said, I've always been interested in them, uh, particularly in how they're built, what makes them um, um, not um, fit into how we understand technology and how things were built back then, and some basically how the how the Great Pyramid defies the laws of physics and stuff. So always interested in them, and yeah, they've changed a lot, a lot for me. All right, we're going to spin it again, see what we get. If we keep getting the same thing, uh, I might just change it. I might just pick one, you know, call it uh, my prerogative, right? If you're a cook, you can change recipe. 
All right, quantum jumping. Quantum jumping. We are on the next category, quantum jumping. Bear with me, please. Yeah. Now, earlier I said that each video uh, on the series can be uh, watched independently and not in order. But when it comes to the quantum jumping theme, there is kind of a flow. So just be mindful of that. Okay. Please remember... As you're shifting, as reality is changing, you're not changing the world. No, you're not changing the world. You're leaving one world for another. All right? Again, you don't change the world. You leave one version and go to another. Okay? Straightforward. Straightforward. All right? So if your intuition tells you that you're a stranger here, well, you're right. You are. We all are in a way. So this, this is a new reality. That's how it works. We are always moving into new realities. But the ra realities we're moving into are now starting to get unusually different than what we've ever experienced. And there's reasons for that. But yes, so you don't change the world. You move from one world to another. And I'm sure some people think that sounds freaking nuts. <laughs> All right. All right, let's spin it again. Story time. All right, this will be the first one uh, so far. Story time. All right. I want to show on stories, huh? Okay. This is the only um, non- Mandel effect um, example that I'm going to cover, I believe, um, during this time. But anyway, my friend, this uh, I'll leave a link below explaining, um, or I'm sorry, a link below connecting uh, to connecting a video um, where I explained how this dude, this friend of mine, made his face turn to like this green glowing non-human form for a second. I swear to fucking God, it happened. It happened. I saw it. No, I was not hallucinating. No, I was not dreaming. Anyway, you can watch the video if you want. Links below, like I said. So, uh, yeah. Same kid. Same kid. This would have been. Uh, we were college age, you know, early 20s. And, uh, yeah, we were uh, regularly practicing uh, using the Ouija board and trying to you know, communicate with ghosts. We found that fun. And uh, we were at my, I was living at my parents' house at the time, um, and we were in a basement, and we uh, had a couple of us, a couple other friends were down there too, we were in the basement, you know, just trying to see if we can, uh, you know, contact the spirit world or whatever you want to call it. So we're coming up the stairs, uh, it was a couple, it was two of, two of our friends, and then me and then him. He was last, I was second to last. So I get up the stairs, and he's... He's about halfway, uh, halfway up the stairs at that moment. All of a sudden, he runs, sprints, practically flies up the damn stairs. He, you know, you know that saying, you looked like you saw a ghost. Well, he looked like he just saw a ghost. He was freaked out, like worse than I can remember him being. He was so freaked out. He's I, I, I mean, he's lucky he didn't pull a freaking leg muscle or two with the, the, the ferocity of his burst up the stairs. He swore something touched his head. He could feel it. Something touched his head. So, yeah. All right, uh, we're getting a little long on the time here, um, so we're going to call it. Uh, but I'll be back uh, with the next episode, or I should say the next segment of this first um, first episode. And I'll see you again soon.